I would imagine uh, uh, some of your clients come to you and when they hear you speaking like this, I'm not sure how, how early you give them the, all, all this in the process, but they've got to feel a little bit overwhelmed because there's, the, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, get a hold of yourself and get out of your own way. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm feeling it. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm here. I'm hearing the, the intent, even sometimes when you say a word, like, you know, like, just do it. You know, I, I just feel like that's coming out of you. And I'm thinking there are probably some women who go, Oh no, I'm even more scared now. Like, what do you do? <laughs> well, well, I guess there's a couple of things that come up for me when you, when you challenge me that way. First of all, yes, I'm intense. There's no question about it. I, you know, I'm, I, that's who I am. I'm enthusiastic. I'm clear. And my husband jokes about, that people need to be careful about getting too close to the sun because they'll get burned. <laughs> yeah. Having said that, I do it with love. And I also know that comparison is the thief of joy. Don't compare my end to your beginning. Uh, I have been working on this my entire life. This is my destiny. This is my dharma. And if someone wants to have a piece of that, and then incorporate that into the, like swallow that rainbow. And then I come with them to maintain the light for them. And then they can decide how much they want to turn it up or turn it down. Because I don't push. I give. It's like a fire hose. It's coming at you. It's me just simply giving. And then it's up to you to decide how much of that you can, you want. And, you know, so like I gauge myself to my clients. Again, I ask a lot of questions. And then I incorporate all this material into my program and into my one-on-one -on -one coaching. And then I keep doing the check-in. And, you know, like I have a structure in place. Like I'll give you an example of type of questions when someone's preparing for a session yeah. with me. It would be, you know, how am I feeling right now? How's my week gone? What did I accomplish since our last uh, call? Uh, um, what did I do? What, what didn't I do? And if I didn't do it, what did I learn from not doing it? Uh, what am I most proud of and want to acknowledge myself for since our last session? What challenges am I now facing? What possibilities or opportunities do I see? What do I want coaching on? And what am I committed to? So it's always a gauging. And I, you know, if something was on the to-do list that didn't get done, that's okay. We add it to the next one if you want. And if you've decided it simply doesn't interest you, if I get a pushback, I move on. It's not my agenda. It's their agenda. I provide the structure. I hold them capable, not just accountable. And then I listen. And life gets in the way sometimes. And that's okay. We back off. We, we shift direction. We'll focus on what makes sense to them right now. The path of least resistance to move forward in the action that is inspired and inspiring to them. Have you had any really big ahas with uh, some of your clients where they've actually like, okay, like I've just, I've just become somebody that I didn't even know I, I could be. And I'm, I'm now able to turn around and help others. Yes. Yeah. Just read the testimonials. Yeah. Yes. That's what fires me up every day. I mean, after a coaching session, I have this high, it's a buzz. I'm, I'm euphoric after coaching. Uh, that's how, you know, you're doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Wow. Now I, I'm, I'm just looking at you and I'm thinking you work out. There's no question about that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, totally well, I, I, I work out when the, whatever. when the gyms are open, you know what I do in the meantime, <laughs> I do 40, I do 40 pushups every morning and I walk for over an hour. I do 40 pushups at one time <laughs> that's <laughs> because that's what helps me keep some of this, you know? Um, because I'm not doing anything else. It's just that I do the push-ups and I go for the hikes. And then when the gym's open, yeah, I get back to my routine. But it could be, I go for months in between now without being able to get in and work out. So I do my other stuff. I still do something. And I listen to books while I walk. Uh, and then I have hobbies. And, I, and I, I'm very clear on wanting quality of life. I, I don't want to work evenings. I am it just, I set boundaries and prioritize and I teach women how to do it. You don't, waste I, any, you don't waste any time either. <laughs> I 
I mean, on your way to going, on your way to no. doing something, you yeah. look after something else, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've got, I'm quite organized in getting it all, all the things that I want that are important to me. I make sure I get them all in. That's interesting. I I'm, take care of me first, so that I can in turn pour greatness into others. Yeah, Peter, I, I practice what I preach. Yeah. Uh, this business of self care builds self esteem and confidence and health. I live it. That's good. That's really good. Yeah, and uh, you have to. I mean, in all honesty, like, how could you even come out? I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I've got that sense about you anyway. How could you even come out talking the way you talk without kind of like, it's kind of buried in you. And you're, you're just like, Bleh. you just let it, <laughs> let it out. But you know what's, you know what really is amazing is hearing your original stories and then listening to you now. It's like, whoa <laughs> like it's a mind blower it's i and that's you know i think that's what caused me to ask you earlier about whether you actually kind of step up and and tell people about what you've been through and to kind of maybe make sometimes their story yeah. not that yeah. bad right? yeah no they they i i am vulnerable and open with my clients uh, it serves a purpose for building the bridge. And authenticity, vulnerability, and knowing I'm always a work in progress uh, as much as we all are, right? If I don't demonstrate that, they're not going to be comfortable sharing. And it also, and, and like also, I want to build relationships. I want to build relationships with women like me who want to be their best and pay it forward and make a difference in the lives of others. Every woman, woman that I work with wants to matter. She wants to know that her life matters and that her gifts are being utilized, that she's expressing herself as she was meant to, that she's not missing out. She's, she's celebrating all, she's firing on all cylinders. We know that cliche. And you know, sometimes that means saying no to things. Others, it's saying yes. And I help her navigate that. Wow. It's mind-blowing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the energy that's coming out of you is, um, uh, like, I mean, I can even feel it on Zoom. So, you know, I, can only, I can't, can't imagine what, they're, what they get when they're, you know, uh, Face to face with you, <laughs> you must just blow them away. Well, I hope not. <laughs> I hope you mean that in a good sense, my I poor do, husband. I, otherwise, I do. I do. I mean it in a. It's like, you know, sometimes you know you get the you know, there's a sense about someone when you're in the same room and you know and they they say something that you feel right. Mm -hmm. Now you're 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 quite descriptive in the in the way that you present yourself. So. You are actually giving, you know, even across Zoom. It's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it. You know, I'm receiving, right? But I'm thinking in the room. I'm just trying to put myself in the room with you, and I'm thinking, oh my god, <laughs> like it's. It, it has, I, I, you know, I, over I, the years and in, in earlier times, Peter, that was a challenge. Okay, yeah. uh, all my life, uh, at, there were different moments where I would, I would get stabbed in the back. Mm. Um, where because of jealousy, I would end up being undermined. And it took me many years to realize that's what it was. Mm. My parents actually said something to me like when I was quite young about something that happened in school. And I just thought they were just trying to make me feel better because the, the takedown by the kids uh, was, was, was so hurtful. And then my dad said, Maura, they're, just jealous of you. And, and that's happened to, you know, on a couple of different occasions as I've gone through different, like I was, I was too much, right? Too enthusiastic, too clear, too intelligent, sometimes, whatever. Um, I mean, it, I feel self-conscious saying that out loud, but, but she, you know, um, so I was a, a mark to be taken down and uh, I wasn't doing it to create jealousy. I, but you know, you just you show up, and then you fill the space, and then you realize, oops, I just took up too much air. And you, then this business of hiding the light under a bushel, until you find what you were meant to do, and then you can let it rip. Right. And I'm doing what I was meant to do. Right. 
a lot of people that I've come across, especially in my branding efforts and, and image building efforts, mm -hmm. are that they don't think of themselves good enough. You know, they suffer from yeah. that imposter syndrome, right? They're thinking, mm -hmm. well, you know, she's really successful and he's awesome and he's got a show and he's written a book. I'm nothing. You must see a lot of that. It breaks my heart when I do. And you're right. There's an awful lot of that out there. And, you know, even I, even you, we all have moments like that where we have to remind it that we're enough. Uh, an example in preparing for our interview today, Peter, when you asked me the question uh, about what the nuances are about you and your personality uh, that set you apart, that make you unique from your competitors. Do you know, I wasn't able to answer the question myself. I, um, I immediately felt quite inadequate. And I reached out to two of my coaching clients and my husband, and they were able to give me the words that I needed to hear so that I could say them to you. It's that, that magical thing that I do, uh, understand how a woman has lost access to her heart. She's now living through her head because of all the setbacks in life that she has shut down. And then one thing leads to another, and before you know it, she's overwhelmed and in many areas of her life. And that shows up in poor health and poor relationships and different things because she's lost her passion and her power. And that's the thing that I do is I uncover that. I let her see it for herself, that she suddenly realizes that she is enough. She starts to believe it again and learns how to reclaim it. And then she becomes a bright light for everyone around. It was that Marianne Williamson thing. Um, Oh, God, it's going blank on my words, but um, it's our light, not our darkness that frightens us most. And that when we give ourselves permission to let our light shine, we actually give others permission to shine around us too, to shine their light too. You know, the, the other analogy is, you know, the, the big light casts such a big shadow, it's hard to thrive in the shadow of something like that. No, turn up your volume too. Let me show you how. <laughs> <laughs> I have a good friend in New York who's been a good mentor to me too and, and a bit of a coach. And he's a, a media production specialist. He actually did uh, some work with Barbara Walters on her show. He was actually the producer of that show. Um, okay. and, and he's he's now morphed into, he's got a, a really cool company and he's uh, definitely a brand specialist. And um, he always talks about, yeah, and he's always pushed me to just press the button, say what's on your mind. Even if it comes out wrong, that at least they'll be hearing who you really are. <laughs> it's like, you know, be, if I'm kooky, if I'm crazy, I should let you know that, right? Like somehow, like don't try to hide yeah. a component of your life that mm -hmm. makes you comfortable. Like, you know what? And if you're not sure about who you are, why don't you ask the people who are the closest to you? Just like you did there, you know? Yeah, like yeah. If, and, and, and he's even got, like he said, the ultimate question to ask your client is, what do you think of me? <laughs> like, yeah. how do I, how, how do I, how do I uh, stack mm -hmm. up? Yeah. To some of the other people in my industry. Yeah. yeah. And Peter, when you do that, sometimes we're not prepared for the overwhelming, beautiful responses we receive, which is why, you know, I said to you, please just go read the testimonials. It's, I'm self-conscious. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tap into something. And you also yeah. have an opportunity when they, you know, <laughs> like Hank keeps always says, what if they come back, like, you're just letting yourself out. And what if they come back with, oh, yeah, you're okay. <laughs> you know, it's all right. You know, you're pretty good. You know, <laughs> But you know well, what? That's something to work with, right? Well, it is, Peter. And it should also be built into your program. I do. Uh, like, for instance, with the group coaching program that I did uh, every single week, I asked for feedback. What was your biggest takeaway and where can I improve? 